Now, President Ekufuadu has ordered the closure of all schools and universities in Ghana as his administration moves to stem the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. Early on Sunday afternoon, health authorities announced that six cases of the disease have been recorded in the country within a period of less than 48 hours. On Sunday evening, a televised address by the president ordered the closure of all educational institutions with effect from today, Monday, March 16, 2020. Fellow Ghanaians, I've come into your homes again this evening to provide an update, as I promised, on the measures taken by government to combat the coronavirus pandemic. You may recall that on Wednesday, 12th March 2020, when I first spoke to you directly on this matter, I announced the first raft of enhanced measures taken in response to the pandemic. At the time, there had been no reported confirmed case of the coronavirus in Ghana. Since then, six confirmed cases have been announced, all of persons who recently traveled into the country. Advisories on how to manage the developments have also been announced by the Ministries of Health and Information. Public education is being intensified to ensure that citizens are well advised on preventive measures. Earlier today, Sunday, the 15th of March, 2020, I chaired a meeting of the Interministerial Committee on Coronavirus Response. After deliberation, I've decided in the interest of public safety and the protection of our population, to review the public gathering advisories early announced as follows. Firstly, all public gatherings, including conferences, workshops, funerals, festivals, political rallies, sporting events, and religious events such as services in churches and mosques, have been suspended for the next four weeks. Private burials are permitted, but with limited numbers, not exceeding 25 in attendance. Secondly, all universities, senior high schools, and basic schools, i.e. public and private schools, will be closed Monday, 16th of March, 2020, till further notice. The Minister of Education, in collaboration with the Ministry of Communication, has been tasked to roll out distance learning programs. However, BECE and WASI candidates will be allowed to attend school to prepare for their examinations, but with the prescribed social distancing protocols. Thirdly, the Government of Ghana's Travel Advisory, issued earlier today, should be observed as announced. Fourthly, businesses and other workplaces can continue to operate, but should observe prescribed social distancing between patrons and staff. Fifthly, establishments such as supermarkets, shopping malls, restaurants, nightclubs, hotels and drinking spots should observe enhanced hygiene procedures by providing, amongst others, hand sanitizers, running water and soap for washing of hands. Sixthly, the Minister of Transport should work with the transport unions and private and public transport operators to ensure enhanced hygienic conditions in all vehicles and terminals by providing, amongst others, hand sanitizers, running water and soap for washing of hands. And seventhly, the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development should coordinate with the Metropolitan Municipal and District Assemblies measures to enhance conditions of hygiene in markets across the country. Additionally, as the experts conduct contact tracing, I appeal to all to cooperate with them to ensure that persons who have come into contact with positive cases 
are identified and supported. Meanwhile, the Attorney General's Department has been directed to present a draft of emergency legislation to Parliament to enforce recent directives announced by the President to check the spread of the coronavirus here in Ghana. The submission of the emergency legislation to Parliament will be in accordance with Article 21.4 C and D of the 1992 Constitution. I've directed the Attorney General to submit immediately to Parliament Emergency legislation in accordance with Article 21, 4 C and D of the Constitution of the Republic to embody these measures. And I further directed the Minister for Health to exercise his powers under Section 169 of the Public Health Act 2012, Act 851, by the immediate issuance of an executive instrument to govern the relevant profession. I call upon Parliament to support the executive in this national endeavor. As I said earlier, there's every need to observe prescribed social distancing and good personal hygiene to prevent community spread. We are determined to do whatever we can to prevent the spread of the virus and protect the population. All the measures that have been announced will be subject to constant review and enhancement, if necessary. Fellow Ghanaians, these are not ordinary times. So let us all put our shoulders to the wheel. And I'm confident that together, by the grace of God, we shall overcome this challenge. Let's turn our attention to the impacts that coronavirus is having on some local activities. Well, trade and activities of the Techiman Central Market has been heavily affected since the health ministry announced the confirmation of coronavirus cases here in Ghana. The market, which is the largest food crops market in the sub-region, has seen buying st uh, staying away. And this, according to traders, has led to low patronage of their goods. Joy News' Anna Sabit has more in the following report. This is the Techiman Central Market. It is the largest food crop market in the entire West African sub-region. This afternoon, we are here to speak with traders to inquire from them the knowledge about the coronavirus, uh, the COVID-19 outbreak. With Ghana recording its first confirmed case of the disease, I want to find out from these traders how well they know about the virus and uh, what precautionary measures they are putting in place to ensure that uh, once they continue with their trading activities, how they mingle with the people, they do not get home with the virus. But first, let's ask whether they've heard about the disease. I have heard of the disease. It is what everyone is talking about, and so I've heard it too. Okay, Martin Wassim. When it came, we learned the black race cannot be infected, and now I understand it's in Ghana, so we are all scared. We all have to protect ourselves. They say you may get it through handshakes, and so we do not know whether to respond when we are being greeted. So the market is not booming. They say the confirmation of uh, two new cases into the country has scared a lot of uh, buyers from coming to the markets today. Hence the reduction in the number of people in the market. This week, the market has been slow because a lot are afraid and have decided not to come to the market. But we have no choice because this is what we live on, and that's why we are always here. This is not the normal attendance of the market because of the disease. People are afraid of coming to the market, so it has affected our sales. Whilst we walked through the market, we spotted only a few of the traders with hand sanitizers. We asked why they are carrying it along. I'm having this on me because of the coronavirus outbreak. They say we should carry it along anywhere we go, so we use it in the absence of soap and water. That is why I move with it anywhere I go. They say we have to protect ourselves from the coronavirus by using hand sanitizers and washing our hands often. 
That's why I have this on me. With health experts advising the general public to use hand sanitizers as a preventive tool to the pandemic, we walked through some pharmacies in search of the commodity to buy, but to no avail. At the moment, we don't have it. Um, we are having some stock as at yesterday, but yesterday morning there was a rush for it. We have, uh, we had both um, the small ones and then the large ones, but there was a rush for it. So it all got finished yesterday. Before yesterday, uh, how often do people come for the sanitizers? Oh, demand was very low. At, at sometimes it takes about a week or more before uh, one person will come and ask for it. Since I'm in work, I said you need hand sanitizer. By a day before yesterday, we do not have some at this moment. But two days ago, we had a lot in stock. The shortage started after the announcement from the health minister. Within 30 minutes, everything we had here got finished. For the past few days, the demand has been on hand sanitizers and face masks. From the Techiman Central Market, I am Anna Savage for joining us. So that's the picture there uh, in the Techiman Market. Let's take you around to other places. Uh, we'll stop in Kumasi, the capital of the is joining us, Vas. Oh, hey, man. Hello. And we apologize for that technical hitch there. Let's get back on Skype and speak to Ohimin Teria. Ohimin, tell us about the reactions uh, of the people of Kumasi following the president's directives. Thank you, Mama V. The residents of Kumasi have been reacting to the president's directive. Uh, first, on senior high schools. Uh, most of the senior high schools in Kumasi are complying with the president's directive. Some of the schools I visited and some of the schools that I, uh, I spoke to, some of the heads, the indication is that the, the students uh, are already going home today. But I've been to schools like Yache Pranto Senior High School, and then Agri Kizeman Community Day Senior High School, University Senior High School, and then uh, just my Senior High School, as well as Jabin. All these schools, the students are already on their way home. But there's only one percent from many of the health of the institutions. They say that uh, in the event where Form 1 and Form 2 students have been asked to go home, the three students are still in school. But the unfortunate thing is that majority of the Form 3 students are day students, and they commit from, school, uh, from home to school daily. So the, the fear is that uh, they could have contact for instance, with people who may be carrying the coronavirus and they may be sending the, uh, the, the virus to school. Uh, so they have been pleading with the government, if it's possible, they can have a total closure, probably have a discussion with officials for the West African Examination Council uh, to suspend uh, a West, a WASI exams indefinitely. Ohim Interia, uh, painting a picture there for us, uh, the situation in Kumasi following the president directive. We'll come back to Accra, to the University of Ghana campus, where we know at least one of the confirmed uh, six cases uh, came from somebody from the University of Ghana. Maxwell Agbagba is standing by one of the biggest halls at the university campus. Maxwell, uh, what's, what have you observed and what can you report?
Well, Baba V, um, for now, the University of Ghana campus um, looks deserted um, right from what we saw um, at the main university um, entrance. Well, if you come here to um, this lecture house, and I'm talking specifically about this uh, three lecture house, um, we have NNB1 here, the new N Block 1, the new N Block 2, and then the new N Block 3. Um, it, is, it is, I mean, th this are one of the um, lecture halls that take quite a number of University of Ghana students. Um, usually for political science um, lectures, you have most of them here. For psychology lectures, you have uh, most of them here. You know, the University of Ghana is big on the humanities, but today, all of these lecture halls, NNB1, NNB2, NNB3, all of them are deserted. In fact, the street um, also looks um, deserted. The only people that you find here today on these streets are, you know, members of the University of Ghana um, security who are going around and ensuring that um, people, students are complying, you know, with the directive um, to stay indoors and that no lecture is actually um, happening. Now, coming all the way to the University of Ghana campus also, what we realized was that um, the, at the taxi rank, the main taxi rank looked quite, you know, um, empty for a Monday morning. Usually on Monday mornings on this campus, it gets very busy because you have a lot of students coming all the way from um, their various homes um, heading back to campus. But this morning looks different with a lot of the taxi drivers just sitting idle doing nothing. Some of them we've been speaking to um, are saying that already they are beginning to feel um, the impact of this uh, 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 of what appears to be a lockdown of the University of Ghana um, community. What we also noticed here also is how people are taking precautionary measures against COVID-19. A lot of the drivers we saw here were in their gloves. Some Uber drivers we saw were in their gloves with their um, nose mask, surgical mask on. Some students, uh, you know, we saw um, who were heading to the night market where they usually get your food items and other things were also in, in, in their nose mask and um, in their gloves. At the night market also, that was what we saw. All the sellers um, at the market uh, had the, uh, the, the, their nose marks on and then hand gloves because this is a place where you have a majority of the students coming to buy, I mean, groceries, coming to buy food, coming to buy food, and then they take it back to their hostels um, to go and eat. At their halls of residence, the various halls of residence, we are at the Jane Nelson Hall, the Elizabeth Francis C. Hall, we were also at the Lima, Hela Leman Hall, and there we saw um, that hand sanitizers had been placed at vantage point. Any student entering will be required to sanitize his hand, their hands will be required to sanitize their hands before they are allowed um, entry. Now, um, one of the banks here on the University of Ghana campus, um, CBG, the Consolidated Bank Ghana, has actually been closed. Well, for those who are taking the risk, uh, for some of the banks who are taking the risk, before you enter, you would need to sanitize your hands before you get um, access. Um, to the um, banquet hall itself. A security man at the gate would make sure that you sanitize your hand before you get um, access uh, uh, um, to the banquet hall. So if you come here to the University of Ghana, it's, it's a total lockdown and all the students are complying um, with a directive issued by the Vice Chancellor of the University um, here at the University of Ghana. Mama One more thing, Maxwell Agwagwa, before you go. Tracing, uh, because we know that one of the six cases came from the University of Ghana campus. Anything you can report on with regards uh, contact tracing? Well, Mama the, um, the information we are gathering um, for our sources here at the University of Ghana indicates that as a stance right now, there is a contact tracing emergency meeting um, happening as we speak to you right now. That meeting is taking place at a location um, here on the University of Ghana campus. Of course, we're following um, with keen interest also. Really would want to know what the outcome of that contact tracing meeting is going to be. But just uh, before, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you saw this um, motor rider who just walked past me. Um, he has covered his nose and that is what a a lot of people here on the University of Ghana campus are actually um, doing, taking precautionary um, measures. But back to um, that meeting that I was talking about, yes, we understand it's taking place now, and we'll be following up to know what the outcome would be. But information that we're gathering here at the University of Ghana campus indicates that already the contact tracing has started. We are learning from our sources that a close friend of um, uh, uh, one of the students who tested uh, positive uh, was tested, and he 
he uh, that person came out negative they don't have the COVID-19 um, it's all part of the contact tracing mechanisms that have been implemented here at the University of Ghana we are told that the emergency response team here at the University of Ghana is liaison with the national contact tracing team you know to help them do the necessary contact and then get in touch with the people who perhaps came into close contact with, uh, uh, with this positive case of COVID-19 that we have on our hand, Mama V. Great. Thank you, Max Olagbaba, uh, for that detailed report from the University of Ghana campus. From one campus to the other, let's cross over, go to the central region, to the University of Cape Coast, where Richard Kojunyako reported uh, late last night after the president directive, students were jubilating uh, because schools had been closed from that uh, from the president directive richard the morning after how does it look like even as we continue to watch pictures of the student from last night so uh, last night i can tell you emphatically that almost all the halls the jubilation were massive um some were carrying their bags others had even put it does be i mean making fanfare and all of that but this morning it's absolutely a different situation. Everyone is minding uh, his or her own business. Um, lectures are not uh, coming up. And so you find a lot of them in their hostels and at the various halls of residence. Others are also bought details to go to uh, their respective communities where they came from. But the students are very, very happy, I can tell you, because it was time for them to ride their crazies. And if you imagine students uh, being told that, well, we are closing down the because of COVID-19, and so we're excited. But they need to come to write the exams at a later day. On the University of Cape Coast campus, um, these hand-washing exercises are ongoing, especially where there, there, there are meetings and other things that are supposed to go on to the University of Cape Coast campus. They have provided uh, the red cap bucket as well, and, and they also uh, provided the sanitizers at the various as well. What you see in your shot is a uh, holy cow. They held their 74th anniversary over the weekend, and this was placed at the entrance and at the real vantage point where everyone who walked into that gathering had to wash their hands. I mean, they had to proper hand washing they told them. And so people from one place to the other are observing some basic precautionary measures so that they stay away from that. Let's get to the market right now. I've been to the upper market. I've been to the upper market. And the situation yesterday is quite different from today. Yesterday, there was business all over. The, 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 the people were buying, others were selling. They told me that well, they did not had any case reported in the central region. So they are to so back. I mean, they were not shaking hands with other people as well. And so these are some of the things are happening in the central region already. Before the president's announcement, some parents had decided that they were not allowing their kids to go to school on Monday, being today. So, hello and behold, the president to the director, and the announcement came that all schools should be closed down. So, um, it's calm here. Uh, here. Well, thank you, Richard Kojonyako, who actually stayed really late to report on the reaction from the University of Cape Coast, given us uh, also painting a picture to us this morning uh, how Cape Coast is reacting, the market, the schools. Cape Coast is host to several senior high schools. Richard Kojonyako, our central regional correspondent. We move now to the Western region. Joining us via phone is my colleague, Ina Talia Kwanza. Ina, give us uh, what, what the people of the Western region in Takradi, to be specific, what have been their reaction to those directives by the president? Okay, Mama, so, um, for instance, the Takradi Technical University, which I visited this morning, um, you can see a few students who are moving on campus. All um, lecture halls have been closed down. They have been locked with padlocks. I spoke to the Vice Chancellor, Reverend Professor Frank Ishen, who says that uh, for now what they are doing is the students who have been in school, um, they are keeping them there because if they should also leave them to go, uh, there is a possibility of spreading. And those who are not yet on campus, they would have to stay home. So after two weeks, when everything is okay, they've also put up emergency um, centers at the um, school clinic so that if we check students in case they see any sign. So 
So those who are not yet on samples should stay at home. Those who are on samples, they are keeping them for two weeks. After two weeks, they will let them go back home. Hey, Natalia Kwanza, thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the Upper West region. Rafik Salam is my colleague there. Rafik, what's been the reaction where you are? I'm afraid we lost Rafik Salam. Uh, we will try and get back to Rafik Salam on the reaction of the people in terms of the school, uh, the local markets, the general reaction to these directives that were given from the president's address late last night. But we'll stay with the subject a while longer because the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association is asking the Ministry of Health to provide the necessary logistics required to prevent the spread of the novel con uh, coronavirus at the designated COVID-19 treatment centers. The association is asking the frontline workers to ensure that personal protective equipment are available for use by all nurses and midwives working in isolation units in the four designated centers. Representatives of the association have been speaking to my colleague, Komla Adom. I will not be surprised because, for instance, um, people may even deliberately or consciously take certain antipyretics. Right, drugs that brings out their temperature before they enter the jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So at a point of entry, they may they may not show any sign or symptom yeah. of, you know, parisia. So I'm encouraged by what uh, Dr. Abadu, Abadu Sakodi has said that they are strengthening the surveillance system in the country. I think that is the only way that we can ward off this infection mm -hmm. because people will find every means possible to enter the country either through appropriate uh, port of entry or uh, unapproved points of entry. So what we need to do is to strengthen the health system, provide the logistics, and I'm happy you mentioned the insurance package. It's something we put it before them. And yesterday when we visited the uh, Rich Hospital, the hospital director told us about the fact that they afforded all the names of the volunteers to uh, the ministry for insurance and compensation packages to be given to them we don't know the details thereof okay but we are encouraged by that okay now he he mentioned also that um, they've taken delivery of a second set of uh, personal protective equipment and they are expecting a third consignment to come to ghana now one of the concerns you raise as an association is that your members are not adequately protected in the front line are you encouraged by that and share with us what the situation is as we speak for your members yeah, we, we are encouraged by that, but I mean, merely, merely announcing it is not enough. I mean, we need to reach those items to the various facilities because there are border posts. And just this morning before I came to the studio, I had a call from a nurse, you know, in, 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 close to the border post. And he told me that, I mean, they virtually do not even have uh, mask and mm. gloves and, and stuff like that. So they should push it to the areas and so that uh, people can be protected. But as we indicated, the statement to me is a precautionary statement. All right. Uh, it goes to emphasize that uh, we will assert our rights as far as that is concerned. It is not an irresponsible position at all. And as I indicated, we are not going to check our responsibility. If we were able to send Ghanaian nurses to other jurisdictions, you know, to go and fight Ebola, why should we run away from? Uh, uh, our own people, okay? mm -hmm. and none of us are immune to this uh, disease. Okay, at any time we can uh, fall prey to that condition. So we are very much uh, going to collaborate with government and its agencies to be able to ward off the infection. But our members must be protected, and that is our pre uh, major concern. Okay, when it comes to education, I want to find out: um, Are your members? adequately informed, first of all, to be able to decentralize some of the education on the COVID-19 to patients. Because um, during the week, my colleague Masola Gwagba did a report. He spoke to one health official on board a public transport. And she mentioned, for example, that you should use a handkerchief when you sneeze. But we all know that when you use a handkerchief, you put it back in your pocket. There's, you know, infections, the, the bacteria, etc. are going to go back, you reuse it, I mean, secondary infections, etc. So what is the level of education of your members on this? Well, as far as nurses and midwives are concerned, I mean, we are very much well in tune when it comes to infection prevention. Okay, there is universal precaution on infection prevention, which the 101 of... <laughs> Uh, whatever you are taught, I mean, internet and training college or university or whatever, is the basic things that you are taught. So we are very much aware of those things. And our people really 
you know, practice it. Of course, they also educate the public about it. Like what you said, you know, in UK or wherever, you sneeze into your elbow instead of maybe in a, in a, in a handkerchief or something. And then, but sneezing into a handkerchief is far better than mm. just bringing the droplets out, mm. which can enter into air, settles on surfaces, and when people touch those surfaces, you now they can get infected. But what we are suggesting is that we should rather use disposable, disposable tissue, so that yeah. as soon as uh, you do that with it, you can drop it somewhere so that you don't spread the infection. Mm. But I believe that nurses and midwives are adequately prepared in collaborating and educating the Ghanaian population so that we, we, we can, you know, check with this infection as quickly as possible. The Director General of the Ghana Health Service mentioned that there's the pre-triage and triage uh, processes that have also been activated. Uh, how far does your membership know about this process? Exactly. When we visited Rich Hospital, we sought inquire from the medical director and then he said the same thing that there's a pre-triage system as was a triage system and uh, i what i want to suggest is that the director general should direct all uh, regional directors and district directors of health services as well as medical superintendents and hospital directors to put those things in place they shouldn't be just mere words other hospitals do triage systems you know already for instance i've worked in the kofuria regional hospital for the past 18 years and you have well strategic triage system all right yes. now let's get some reactions from some organizations will be issued some directive and this is from the presbyterian church of ghana sign off by the moderator of the church who says following yesterday's address by the president all church services in the presbyterian church of ghana suspended for four weeks and all presbyterian schools are closed down indefinitely all agents must take notes and comply immediately goes on to say uh, that we should keep calm and continue to pray to the god of heaven until something happens jesus is still on the throne it shall all come to pass this is from the moderator of the presbyterian church of ghana there's another reaction from the Ghana Library Authority, which we will share with you as a public notice. All libraries across the country are closed to the public until further notice. So organizations also following that directive by the president or those directives also issuing their own statement to the general public in accordance uh, with it. We'll be keeping you updated uh, on all the reactions and all the updates for the coronavirus. Well, the Central Regional Minister says he uses the first five minutes of every opportunity he is given to speak to touch on Arrive Alive and the need for all to embrace the campaign. Kwame Duncan, who is full of praise for the multimedia group, especially Joy News for the Arrive Alive campaign, himself a victim of a road accident, sees the campaign as a possible panacea to the many crashes, uh, killing thousands of Ghanaians every year. Here's more. Privileged to be in the office of the Central Regional Minister, uh, Mr. or oh, Teacher Kwamna Duncan. <laughs> um, we have started this uh, campaign, Arrival Life, and um, uh, he must be interested because um, his region has been the news, uh, some for good reason, but this year, because of that fatal accident which claimed a number of lives, Central Region was in the news for all the bad reasons. But he promised to do some things to make sure that what we witnessed this year do not happen again, even if it will happen, not at that um, high rate. And I'm here to have interaction with him about this Arrival Life campaign and what he can do to help in his capacity as a regional minister to ensure that under his tenure, the few months left, even if there will be road crashes, is going to reduce. So good afternoon and thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Kwame. Yeah. You must be concerned about road traffic accident. We heard you a few weeks ago speaking passionately about what happened on the Cape Coast Takradi stretch. Yes, uh, I am concerned. I've always been concerned. And I'm sure everywhere meaning Ghanaian is concerned about the continuous uh, road crashes or traffic uh, accidents on our roads. Uh, many families are in a certain level of pain, agony. It's because they have lost those they depend on, breadwinners. Some have become maimed and have 
had opportunity to watch a few of your docus that you have done, uh, persons who have been affected by the loss of their dear ones. Mm -hmm. And I recall, uh, in, I think, uh, in the 90s, where three eminent surgeons, yeah. yes, the urologist. the, yes, urologists, who together lost their lives mm -hmm. on the Accra Kumasi yes. uh, Highway. Around Linda Door. Exactly. And uh, the wife, one of the wives, I'm told, that the, 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 the uh, tragedy simply did not even make her continue to even have any more husband. Mm. And I also listened to uh, the children, all of it captured in the doku, uh, the impact, yeah. impact that it had on him mm. and had on siblings and the, the, the family as a whole. Uh, uh, to tell yourself that I have a business to transact yeah. and having free mind, free heart, I'm traveling across our route, mm. across our towns, get to my destination and carry out a business, a transaction, and come back only for information mm. to get back to the house. Mm. That this is what has happened. That you didn't arrive alive at all. I said, it's, it's, it's one that comes with a certain level of devastation. Mm. Devastation. And uh, Kwame, I want to pat you in particular on the back, and then uh, your your media conglomerate. Here, yeah, I'm talking about uh, the Joy Group, yeah, multimedia, multimedia, multimedia Group Limited. Yeah. You are the kind that if you place your mind on a particular subject, mm. you don't give up. Mm. And the period that you started Arrive Alive, uh, you have had instances where the very thing you are projecting to the entire country, for the entire country to be brought on board, gets happening and happening mm. and happening. In, in, in some other establishments. <laughs> so, uh, uh, let's give up. Mm. You cannot give up. But what I've seen, the characterization of uh, the multimedia is that even when the going is getting tough, that's when you get going. Mm. And I know that in the long run, you will succeed in galvanizing the thoughts and minds of all who matter and the major stakeholders already I've seen the strides that you have made, yeah. uh, getting support from Christian Council. I heard, I'm sure, the General Secretary who spoke. Mm -hmm. I also have heard about the National uh, Safety Authority, Authority, the DVLA, they themselves, the MTTD. Yes, except that the campaign that you have waged and the call on all of us, we have not responded in a manner mm. that corresponds with the vigor. Mm. And that's on Arrive Alive. Uh, just before we cross over to business, there's a statement that's been issued, a directive to all Archbishop, Bishops, Priests, and lay faithful from the National Catholic Secretariat Office of the President that's directing that all public masses be suspended for the next four weeks. It says daily private masses should be offered, and then churches and adoration chapels be open for private prayers. Uh, also, that where possible, live streaming of masses should be encouraged to enable the faithful to receive spiritual communion. Uh, also, all public spiritual programs such as retreats, devotions, meetings, confessions, pilgrimages be suspended also for the next four weeks and all Catholic schools be closed until further directive. And that's coming from the National Catholic Secretariat Office of the President, Most Reverend Philip Name. And that's the latest coming in from the uh, Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference. Uh, stay with us. You're still watching News Desk in Business. We're examining the likely economic impact should Ghana fail to contain the outbreak of this virus. That's all coming up. Stay with us. Government is ana analyzing the potential impact to our economy of the virus and will trigger the relevant response 
to minimize it. Hi, good morning. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwao. President Kofado is asking businesses in various hospitality centers to observe strict hygienic procedures. This is one of several measures he announced to help contain the coronavirus after the country recorded six cases, all imported. Meantime, the cost of goods and services are already going up. The prices of products like hand sanitizers, wipes and tissues, among others, have doubled, if not tripled, since Ghana announced the first two cases. Joining me in studio to discuss this, uh, Joy Business Analyst uh, Philip Namfori. Uh, thanks for your time this Thank morning. You, Social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, but we've seen uh, what the impact has been around the world. Yeah. Uh, what should we brace ourselves for? I think um, in Ghana, we should look at both the micro and the macro. Um, we have, we've discussed the macro more, uh, one, on the fact that we are a commodity-dependent country. If the demand for commodities globally goes down, that affects us. Um, that's already reflecting in the oil price. Mm. We depend heavily on oil revenues uh, to fund critical infrastructure, such as the FSHS. So if we if we projected sixty two dollars and we've come down to thirty, we should expect some ripples in there on the macro level. We can think of other things, but on the micro level also, we've mentioned the hand sanitizers, etc. And the fear, panic, and uncertainty is it's creating, leading to panic buying. Yesterday, I saw people in shops uh, stacking up their car boots or stuff like that. Aggregate demand for this immediate period, all things being equal, equal may increase, yeah. uh, leading to a reduction in what is on the shelf, what is available. That's if stocks cannot meet what is being demanded. And we should think about the other part of the world also uh, that is affected. Do we demand certain goods from them? Do they supply us? If their supply chains are also affected, then our supply chains are also affected. Apart from that, even down to uh, financial transactions, paying for goods and services. Right. People are scared. We heard the story about the money being one mode of it being transmitted. And I visited like the bank this morning. The ATM yes. is shut. And, and, you, and you were telling me, I'm sure some banks may be afraid of a run on their banks, uh, mm. but we need to weigh all these things. So you see that the issues are a lot. But because of time, I wouldn't want to speak a lot. Well, uh, meantime, the president last week announced uh, government was assessing the impact of the economy. Take a listen to what the president said. The government is an analyzing the potential impact to our economy of the virus and will trigger the relevant response to minimize it. We began to engage with the domestic pharmaceutical industry to assist in producing as much of the logistics required to prevent and combat the virus as is possible under the circumstances. Indeed, we must take advantage of this crisis to strengthen our domestic productive capacity so we can advance our self-reliance and reduce our dependence on foreign imports. Necessity, they say, is the mother of invention. Necessity is the mother of invention. The president says they'll trigger measures. So, uh, Philip, elsewhere in the U.S., uh, they have cut interest rates to almost zero and launched a $700 billion uh, stimulus program. Yeah. Uh, if you were a government, if you were the president, what would you be thinking right now? Yeah, he uh, talks about cutting down on imports, uh, I mean, trying to grow uh, our, our markets domestically. I think, Can that happen? Yeah, I think that's a good point. We need to take advantage of it. But uh, growing our, mass, our market domestically, we tried it over years. It's not going to take two, three months. This is a lifetime thing. But we need to look for measures that can ramp up production of things that we can get here. On the side of um, the U.S. example, the Bank of Ghana can just use some measures that will make sure that banks and then their clients uh, more or less benefit in some way to help you and I. Um, fiscal authorities also, that's the Ministry of Finance, you can find ways of having cuts here and there. But again... Do we have the capacity to do yes, that? Because the very U.S. is a one. developed economy. Yes. Again, our market is smaller. We have more constraints as other markets. That would be a difficult one. I'm sure there will be some discussions in there. But again, let me just add, even with the foreign countries, when there's, a, when there's fiscal stimulus or monetary stimulus, and these companies are helped, and people are not going to work to produce, what happens? 
the cash or the help sits in your hand and you can't really do much. So I think as the time goes on, mm. we need to think about all these things. But more importantly, make sure that we contain it. Thank you very much indeed. This is very terrible. We hope that the virus is contained. Already uh, we're hearing that there is a meeting of um, airline operators happening right now uh, considering the latest travel advisory and what the impact will be on their uh, businesses. We'll update you as and when we get more information. That's it for business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Time for sports, and I saw a headline, George Adegunia, which says, in this dark reality, sports doesn't matter. Yes, Does it? It doesn't matter. It's about making sure everybody is healthy, everyone is fine, and good to play the sport. And it's something that affects all of us, mm -hmm. not just those in sport. So we, we understand that we have to allow football and all other sporting activities to go. Uh, the only problem is that, well, the Ghana Football Association will have a few issues in trying to rectify these things. Um, because there was a game played yesterday. Yes, there were games played. Oh, games played, played actually, so yes. So the, the match day has a number of games played. There were two more games to be played today. Hartsville and Ken Faisal, and then Kumasiya Santikorka and Inter Allies. Now, these games will not come up today, and that's because of the President's announcement last night. Mm. Maybe the Ghana Football Association could have thought ahead of the President and I heard of everything, knowing that um, it was difficult at this point. Perhaps mm -hmm. we could have Because other, ended other, other leagues were suspending yes. their matches. Yes, and that would have given them the opportunity to try and rectify things mm -hmm. when football is back in a, in a more smooth way. Because at the moment, they've got like two games to try and rectify. And it makes it odd in terms of the calculations. But we'll see how it goes. But generally, it's not only football that's going to suffer. We yeah, but, let, but, but, but even with the football, yes, the football, the Ghana Football Association's yes. directive, is it for four weeks or indefinitely? Four weeks. For four weeks, okay. Uh, at least, because we know that this is a, a fluid situation mm. and there could be a lot of updates going mm. and there could be some changes. So I think Ghana Football Association is aware of that. So there were games scheduled to be played today, no Two games? Two games, no games today. Uh, we know that the qualifiers, of course, are not going to take place. The, the Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers won't take place. The Women's League as well were in session, the Division One League. Yes, we've got so much happening around us. So. And then another key thing is, aside the football, we're talking about sporting activities. Mm. It's affecting the likes of boxing, mm -hmm. who are looking to qualify more boxers for the Olympics, if that will come on. That's Tokyo 2020. Uh, swimming, uh, also we're looking to qualify for an important event. And so uh, everything is shut down at the moment. And we're just yeah. looking forward to what's it. So what we are looking out for, and what you hear from us in the subsequent bulletins, uh, the, the reaction of the Ghana Premier League board to this, mm. because the Ghana Football Association suspended based on you know, the President's directive. Mm. So what are the Ghana Football Association, or what are the Ghana Premier League board has got to say about it? And then we'll look at what the clubs are going to be doing in the time. Mm -hmm. Do they keep their players in camp? or they allow them to go. I've been speaking to some CEOs already, and they are indicating that they're yet to have a meeting to decide what the plan is. So if you're hard to vote, for instance, would you keep the boys in camp all through, or you allow them to go home? What are the risks? Because that, that will also come with some yes. expenses yes. if yes. you're keeping Huge. them. But Huge. there are some people who thought that yeah. we could have still played the games, because after all, we've heard that the virus cannot thrive in an environment uh, in heat. Yeah. For instance, there are people who have that opinion. Yeah, I think that those are those were interesting uh, delusions, I should say. I don't know where the, all the, all that came from, but we have learned over the course. Some even said that it, it cannot affect, or black men cannot be affected. There's so just many theories that just didn't make it didn't make any sense because we have seen that it's a big thing, and we've seen yeah black men getting it. We've seen mm. it happening in countries with even in, in temperate zones and even Ghana. So these are things that we need to all get in and try and work out there. Again. Even for the European landscape, we've got, they've got a lot. Even though that, that we didn't see the leagues you know, in session at the weekend, we didn't see Serie A, we didn't see Bundesliga, mm. the Italian Football Federation have indicated that they would like UEFA to postpone the Euros. The Euros is a big competition that they look forward to every four years. Mm. We're expected to have this one. It's going to be played around 12 countries, so there's going to be a lot of movement. UEFA has yet to have a decision on that. They will have a meeting on Tuesday. And what's the date for that event? Yeah, that's supposed to be playing in May, June. So that's really close. Is going really, really close. Mm. And what, why are they even interested in postponing the Euros? So that it will give them the opportunities to round up their leagues. Remember that the Italian Serie the English Premier League, the Bundesliga, mm. the La Liga have all not ended. And they need to resolve that. So they are looking to see if, if there's an opportunity that the UEFA is going to postpone the 2020 Euros, then it will give them the chance to roll over and 
perfectly round mm. up the leagues and then maybe we'll have to forfeit uh, Euro 2020. Well, I, I have a year. feeling that we, it would end up being so because mm. Europe has become the new epic center for this uh, well, yeah, disease. I think there are a number of things that can go around. The UEFA can decide that, all right, we're going to play the Euros over 12 countries. We're now going to station it in one country. So that's it. It will still mean traveling around. So let's see what happens. Mm. And again, they're looking at the timelines. Uh, what are the possibilities? When is it expected to peak? But from where we sit, it looks like June is not too safe. Yeah. It's not just too safe. So let me ask you, yeah. what are football people, sporting Same. people doing, and what are general, sports journalists such as yourself yeah. doing? Yeah, so sports journalists, I have to look for the stories now. We have to look for the reaction stories that are coming in from mm -hmm. what's happened with coronavirus. So you were hearing things like Ateta's wife, Arsenal's coach, Mikel Ateta's wife, was on social media. She did a video to say her husband was well. And all the media... So now we're, we're, pick that right we're go going to the very petty there. stories. So, yeah, yeah, so we are looking for <laughs> the reaction and everything because we don't have stories per se right on the pitch. But yeah. as and when things change, as and when Cup decide to do something, dates come up, uh, we'll be here to bring you up. But it's going to be a difficult time yeah, for it is sports journalists indeed. who can think out of the box. Exactly. Luckily, you have a lot who can think out of the box. Definitely. So no That's from George Adeginia. He'll be bringing us a lot of backstories, even though there won't be any actions to report on. Uh, but listen, here's what we have to say. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after going to the bathroom, before eating and after blowing your nose, coughing or sneezing. And to help you track the 20 seconds, well, some experts say, sing the happy birthday song from beginning to end twice while you scrap. And for a road safety tip, allow yourself to take short breaks when driving long distances. On behalf of the production team, I thank you for your company. Stay with us. There are plenty of conversations on social media. Naa Jelly Doku brings us all. Enjoy News Interactive. That's right after this.